Okay. Thank you, Professor, for the very nice introduction. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to this talk. I am Lin Xiaowu. I'm a postdoc researcher of Gerard and Department of Logistics and uh, Operation Management of Atris Montreal. And uh, the topic of my presentation today is uh, vessel service planning in seaports. So uh, this presentation is based on this paper, and you can find uh, the uh, working paper version of, the, of it from this, this link. And let's start with a little story. So the man, the name of the man in the picture is Samuel Lahorn Clemens. And I guess not, not many of us are familiar with this name, but he is famous for his another name, Mark Twain. So we all know that uh, uh, Mark is a renowned American writer who has many uh, classical works. But before being a writer, he was a, a pilot on the Mississippi River. Actually, his pen name, Mark Twain, is a pilot to the term for a measured river depth of two fathoms, that is 12 feet, which was safe for which was safe water for uh, a steamboat. He said, and I quote, that the pilot was the grandest position of all. The pilot, even in those days of travel wages, has a princely salary from 150 to 250 dollars a month. So uh, he was a river pilot until the Civil War broke out in 1861, when the traffic was curtailed along the Mississippi River. So Samuel lost his job as a pilot and became Mark Twain as a writer. So as a matter of fact, marine pilots continue to be a very well-paid job today. The yearly salary for marine pilots in the US is over 400,000 US dollars which is uh, higher than the average salary for airplane pilots in the US. Pilots enjoy high salaries, not only because they are important, but also because seaports where they work are important. So today, seaports, uh, vessels carry 80% of cargoes by volume around the world. Seaports are key nodes, in a uh, maritime supply chain in 2018, more than 10 billion tons of cargo were handled by seaports around the world and uh, this volume is still growing. Maritime transportation is also very uh, capital incentive. Seaports and the vessels involve huge investments up to billions of US dollars for a port and millions of US dollars for a vessel. So it is critically important for vessel services in seaport to be efficient. And uh, this picture below shows a container terminal. Uh, this is the, the key part and uh, this is the yard part. And there are two container ships that are being handled by cranes in the uh, terminal. The general uh, layout of uh, a seaport is presented in, in this figure. It composed of three uh, main parts. First, an anchorage then a channel and terminals. Uh, and the terminal uh, consists of uh, a set of berths. So vessels coming from the open sea first reach and wet in the anchorage. They then sail from the anchorage to the terminal through, through the channel. And a terminal is, uh, contains a group of berths where vessels are handled. The port stay of uh, a vessel in a, in, a, in a seaport consists of four stages. So after arriving uh, in the anchorage, a vessel waits there and the, until it is ready to enter the channel, it then uh, sails through the, the channel to reach the berth. Uh, the vessel is then handled at the berth. And when the handling is completed, the vessel enters the channel again, sails through it, and finally uh, leave the port to return to the open sea. So vessel movements in seaport waters must be guided by a pilot. So we can see that uh, in the second and the fourth stage of, uh, of its port stay, a marine pilot must be on board to provide navigational guidance for the captain of the vessel. The left picture uh, is a map of the, the Hong Kong container port. So we can see there is an anchorage here and channel 
and uh, terminals here. So pilots can board a vessel at the entrance of the channel or at a berth where um, a vessel is handled. And this picture shows how a pilot boards a vessel at the uh, pilot boarding station. So the pilot is first transferred from another vessel or from uh, a berth using the um, pilot, pilot boat. So after approaching the vessel, the pilot boards the vessel using a soft ladder like this. Uh, some ports, they also use helicopters to, to transfer um, pilots between vessels or between uh, the, the berths and, and the vessel. And this picture below uh, gives an illustration of a, a vessel being handled at a berth in a terminal. Uh, we uh, briefly review the related studies. So of many problems related to seaport operations that have been studied in the literature, the ones that are mostly, most closely related to the vessel service planning problems are first, the birth allocation problem, and the second, the pilotage planning problem. So in the birth allocation problem, BAP, uh, the key of the seaport is partitioned into a set of discrete berths, and each berth can handle at most one vessel at a time. The aim of the problem is to serve a set of uh, vessels at the minimum total waiting time. And uh, uh, the pilotage planning problem, shorted as PPP, uh, is to control the traffic flow in the uh, seaport and to assign a group of pilots to a set of uh, pilotage tasks. Here, uh, a task corresponds to uh, a vessel entering or leaving a terminal. Uh, the birth allocation problem has been well studied in the literature. The study in this area studied from MI uh, and the co authors in 1997, who presented the first uh, MILP uh, model for this problem. And the other classical papers include MI 2001, MI 2003, and Kodo uh, and the co authors 2005. Uh, the pilotage planning problem is relatively new. It was first formally described by uh, Wu and the uh, co authors in 2020. And then Jia uh, and the co authors 2020 studied a pilotage planning problem with multiple channels and with limited anchorage spaces. So both studies uh, of PPP assumed that a uh, first allocation problem was solved in advance. And the results of the BAP provides input for the PPP. So we can see that the birth allocation problem and uh, uh, the pilot teacher planning problem are correlated, but they are solved sequentially in the literature. So we propose a vessel service planning problem that address birth allocation and the pilot teacher planning in combination. Uh, the main contributions of our uh, study are as follows. First, we propose a research problem that integrates two important problems in C port operations. And we develop a, an exact solution approach that combines vendors to completion and column generation uh, in an efficient branch and band framework. Uh, our approach uses an efficient level correcting algorithm for generating columns and a, and a tailored branching scheme for identifying uh, integer solutions. We also propose several important acceleration strategies that significantly improve the performance of the approach. Uh, third, we uh, conduct extensive uh, numerical experiments using data instances from one of the world's largest seaports, that is the Hong Kong Canada port. And the results also demonstrate that our solution approach can obtain optimal or near optimal solutions for real world instances, and that our approach performs robustly against uh, um, the changes in different in problem problem settings. The computational results also clearly demonstrate the benefits of integrated vessel service planning against the traditional sequential distribution method. Uh, we now formally define the uh, vessel service planning problem. Uh, in the problem, we are given the following sets. We have a set T of 10 steps and a set S of shifts for assigning uh, the pilots. And each shift S has a subset of uh, 
time steps denoted by Ts. Uh, okay, they are a set of uh, they are a set of k of vessels calling at the seaport in the planning horizon, and the port has a set of b of berths. Uh, the set of pilot pilots is denoted by p. Uh, we let i be the set of piloted tasks or tasks corresponding to pilot services in vessel movement in the seaport. We further use i in, uh, which is um, the subset of tasks corresponding to vessels sailing into uh, the berths and I out, which is the, the subset of tasks for um, vessels sailing out of the, the berths. Uh, we let I K to denote the tasks for serving of vessel K. And we have the size of I K is two, uh, one for entering the berths and one for leaving the berths. So, the parameters of the problem are as follows. Uh, first, for the time parameters, uh, first, each, each burst have a, a valuable time after which it can serve the vessels. We then define the handling time of a vessel at a, a burst, which is HKB. A task has to start within a time window defined by the earliest and the latest feasible start times. Uh, each, each task also has a uh, duration time denoted by DI. We assign pilots to work on shifts, and a pilot can uh, perform multiple tasks in one shift, but there should be a minimum setup time to transfer the pilot between two tasks, and this time is denoted by Q. So as for the costs, first, uh, the time to start a task affects the efficiency of uh, cargo handling and uh, vessel, vessel turnaround. So to, to promote, uh, Fast cargo handling and the vessel turnaround, we are defining C1, which is the penalty cost of starting a task at a certain time step. Uh, the cost for uh, handling a vessel at different berths can be different, and we set C2 as the vessel handling cost at the berth. Uh, finally, a uh, port, port has to pay for each pilot working on each shift. And this cost is denoted by C3. So we use the following discrete variables in the problem. The variable for uh, birth allocation is U. The second set of uh, variables are for uh, traffic uh, management of the vessels. So that record whether uh, a vessel reaches, leaves, or occupies a birth at some time step. So our third decision variables um, determine the scheduling of uh, pilots. The X variable uh, tells whether a task starts at a time step, and we use these Y variables to uh, basically construct uh, the route of uh, a pilot for serving the tasks. We use the binary variable Z uh, to match the task start time with the shifts. And we have an integer variable ns, uh, which represents the number of pilots working in a shift. So uh, we next uh, present a mixed the integer linear programming model for this problem. And this is the uh, objective function. It minimizes the sum of three terms, including the penalty cost of starting tasks later than their earliest visible start times which is uh, the first term, the cost of uh, handling vessels, which is the second term, and the cost of assigning pilots, which is the third term. Our constraints can be divided into four blocks. And the uh, first block of constraints are for uh, birth allocation. First, we uh, require that a, a suitable birth must be allocated for each, each, each vessel. Then we require that uh, each vessel reaches and leaves a berth at one and only one time step. In constraints five, uh, we require that uh, a vessel cannot move into a berth before the berth become available. And then we, in constraint six, we uh, state that a vessel has sufficient time for, for cargo handling when it is mooring at a berth. Uh, constraint seven and uh, it indicated that at any time step, 
a burst can handle at most one vessel. So uh, the second block of constraints are for uh, vessel traffic management. We first require that each, each task starts within a given time window. Uh, then to ensure the safety of uh, the traffic flow in the channel, vessels have to queue up uh, when, when, entering, when entering the channel. And there, ha there has to be a minimum headway between two vessels uh, entering the channel. Besides, uh, vessels with extra weeds cannot sail in the channel in the opposite direction simultaneously. And to, Im to impose uh, such restrictions, we uh, define the uh, set of task pairs with headway requirements, which is set U, and the set of uh, task pairs that cannot be performed simultaneously, which is um, set, set U. Uh, so, and, and the relevant constraints are constraints 10 and con, con, constraints 11. Finally, uh, constraint 12 and constraint uh, 13 link the start times of uh, uh, pilot tasks associated with uh, a vessel with the times when the vessel enters or leaves a berth. So our third uh, block of constraints define um, pilot scheduling. We first let uh, each pilot has at most one starting activity. Here, an activity can be a pilot task or a rest period. And we uh, require that a pilot should, ha should have one rest period in a shift. Then uh, the, the balance of, uh, of the activity flow for each uh, pilot is ensured in constraints 15 and 16. Uh, the shift allocation variable V is uh, linked with the routing variables Y in constraints uh, uh, 15 and uh, in constraints 18. Sorry. Uh, then uh, in constraints 19. Uh, we require that a uh, rest period has to be arranged for a pilot that works in the uh, planning horizon. And this rest period must start within, with, within the allowable time window. Contrast 20 uh, ensure that a rest period must be include, included in the activity flow uh, for a pilot. And then constraints 21 and 22 impose the minimum setup time uh, between two consecutive activities performed by one pilot. We then use uh, constraints 23 to calculate the number of uh, pilots required to work in each shift. So uh, the last set of constraints are for uh, defining the domains of the variables. Mo most of these variables are binary variables and we have uh, a set of integer variables. Next, we, uh, we discuss about the uh, solution approach for, for this problem. So in the previous part, we have formulated the problem as a um, mixed integer linear programming model, which can be uh, solved uh, directly using some optimization solvers. However, we found that only very small instances can be solved. And, uh, and we think the difficulty for, for solving the model comes from the following two aspects. First, we, we, we use a lot of uh, uh, binary variables and uh, logical constraints as the big M constraints to describe the start time of uh, tasks and also the sequence of uh, pilot activities. Besides uh, the, the vessel moment and the um, pilot scheduling decisions are coupled in, in the model. And this, these two, two results, first the low quality of lower bounds from the LP relaxation and the, a large number of nodes in the branch and bound tree. Also, uh, it also leads to low quality of upper bounds found by the heuristics built in the solvers. So uh, based on the above observations to reduce the number of binary variables, get rid of the big game constraints and to improve the LP relaxation of the model, we uh, reformulated the model as a set of model. 
Uh, this sun recovery model is formulated based on a set of weather routes and a set of pilot routes. A weather route for a vessel uh, specifies the time steps for the vessel to enter the channel, to start handling, and to leave the berth. It also specifies the berth where the the where the uh, vessel is handled. And uh, a pilot route for a pilot in a ship specifies a sequence of uh, pilot tasks and the rest period to be conducted by the pilot, and also the start time of each activity contained in this sequence. Uh, the third recovery model it makes use of the following parameters and uh, variables of uh, vessel routes. We let omega be um, the set of all feasible vessel routes, and uh, a route is feasible in terms of its entering time, handling time, departing time, and uh, the handling berth. We use omega k to denote the set of uh, feasible routes for, for vessel k. Uh, the, the, the width associated with the rot is denoted by k omega. We then uh, use the binary parameter alpha to denote whether a task is included in a rot and starts at a certain time. We use this beta parameter to uh, denote whether a uh, vessel reaches and leaves a berth at a certain time steps. The cost of uh, choosing a route is denoted by C bar, which equals the sum of the penalty cost associated with starting tasks at some time steps, and also the cost of handling vessel at some berths. Uh, the decision variable for each route is, is chi, which is binary. Uh, we next define the parameters and the variables for uh, the pilot routes. We we'll let phi uh, be the set of feasible uh, pilot routes, and a pilot route is feasible in terms of the schedule of performing tasks and the rest of the period. Well, we also let phi s to denote the subset of pilot routes in a ship to s. Uh, the gamma parameter indicates whether a task is covered in a pilot route and starts at a time step. T, and the, the cost of uh, a route uh, equals the cost of assigning a pilot, a pilot to work in the corresponding shift. For each route, we have a binary variable mu representing the flow, binary flow of the route. So we are now ready to uh, present the uh, set covering model, M2. Uh, the objective function is to minimize the total cost for us for allocating uh, flows on the routes. Cost chains 32 uh, require that each vessel should, uh, should select a vessel route in the port. We use cost chain 33 to ensure that at any time there is at the most one vessel at a berth. Constraints uh, 34 and 35 are to impose the headway requirement and to prevent some incompatible vessels to sail in the channel at the same time. And uh, the key constraint is um, a constraint 36, which means that if a task is performed at a certain time in the vessel routes, then it should be conducted at the same time in the pilot routes. So the last two sets of constraints define the domains for our decision variables. So because uh, there are a very large number of vessel routes and the pilot routes, we have to solve uh, the set recovery model M2 through column generation and uh, branch and bound. Then at each node of the branch and bound tree, we actually solve a uh, LP realization of uh, uh, this set recovery model. And this left, shoe, this left figure shows uh, our method for solving the LP realization. 
we first create, create an initial set of uh, routes and then solve the restricted master problem. Then we solve a pricing problem to check whether their Western routes are pilot routes with negative reduced costs. And those with negative reduced costs will be added back into the master problem, restricted master problem, which is solved again. And uh, uh, this procedure repeats until no routes with negative reduced cost can be de detected. However, due to uh, constraint, uh, constraint six, uh, 36 that couple the vessel routes and the pilot routes, this LP realization is difficult to be solved by a column generation directly. We uh, observed that once the uh, vessel routes are fixed, uh, the problem then reduced to a pilot scheduling problem in a generally very sparse, sparse time network, which is much easier to solve. We therefore propose a bandage decomposition method to solve the air periodization of M2. Uh, let's first define the sub problem in the bandage decomposition. Suppose that we have decided the flows of the uh, vessel routes, then the air periodization of M2 uh, reduces to the following primal bandage sub problem, which only involves the mu variables. So we can see that in these constraints, the chi variables are now parameters. And uh, this, this constraint of 14 requires that if a task is performed in the vessel routes at a certain time step, uh, it should be performed at the same time step in the uh, pilot routes. And we further have the following observations. First, when solving uh, the sub problem through column generation, in the pricing sub problem, we are for solving this problem, we only needed to consider tasks i and the time steps t that satisfy this inequality. And uh, this observation enable, enables us to formulate the pricing problem in a, a space time network with significant, significantly fewer nodes than the original network that contains all time steps for starting a pilot task. And based on this observation, we designed a bi-directional level correcting algorithm that solves the pricing problem with this time complexity. Uh, here, um, HS denotes the set of all uh, task time pairs that satisfy this inequality in shift S. Uh, we further formulated the two of the, 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 the bender cell problem. We let uh, delta and the zeta denote uh, the vectors of the dual variables associated with constraints 40 and 41 in the primal problem. Then the dual of the primal sub bender cell problem called the dual bender cell problem can be formulated as follows. And we uh, further have the proposition that this dual problem is always feasible and bounded. And this further indicates that it is sufficient to add only Bender's optimality cuts in the Bender's master problem. Uh, we formulated the master problem as, as follows. Uh, we let delta denote the polyhedron defined by the constraints of the dual Bender's subproblem. We then use uh, gamma to represent the set of uh, extreme points of this polyhedron by introducing the additional variable eta, uh, the, the, the LP relaxation um, M2 now reduced, now can be reformulated as the following Bender's master problem, which is denoted by BMP. And uh, these are the Bender's cuts. So uh, we have uh, now reformulated uh, the, the set recovery model to this Banner's master problem. But uh, this formulation has a large number of vessel routes and uh, a large number of uh, Banner's cuts. Enumerating them all at once is impossible. So we, uh, we therefore design a column and the Banner's cut generation algorithm for solving the Banner's master problem. 
this uh, picture shows the pseudo code of the column and the Bender's cat generation algorithm for solving the Bender's master problem. We start uh, the algorithm with a set of initial Bender's cuts, which can be an empty set. We then uh, iteratively solve the master problem and uh, the sub problem uh, using column generation. We then check uh, whether new Bender's optimatic cuts should be added into the master problem. And uh, this procedure uh, continues until there is no additional Bender's cuts can be identified. Uh, I briefly uh, described the column generation algorithms for the master problem and the Bender sub problem. So for the master problem, problem in each, each, each iteration of the uh, column generation procedure for solving the master problem, we solve chi times B pricing problems each corresponding to a vessel and a birth. And each pricing problem can be solved by enumeration in, uh, with this time complexity, uh, where I and J uh, denote the tasks associated with a vessel selling into and out of a birth. And uh, these are the time windows for conducting these tasks. Then for the sub, sub problem uh, in each iteration of the column generation procedure for the sum of problem, we solve S pricing problems, each corresponding to a shift. And we, we designed a bi-directional level correction algorithm that solves each problem in, uh, with this uh, time complexity. Here, uh, the HS is a set of task time pairs that need to be considered in uh, shift S. Finally, to obtain um, an integer uh, solution for the original set recovery model M2, we uh, embedded the column and the uh, Bender's cut generation algorithm in a branch and bound framework. This uh, from and we term this framework uh, as the branch price and Bender's cut approach. The approach is summarized as follows. First, uh, our uh, model M2 is solved through branch and bound. And each node of the branch and bound tree, we then have an LP realization of M2. The LP realization of M2 is, is decomposed into a Bender's master problem and also a Bender's sub problem. We then call um, column and the Bender's cut uh, algorithm to solve the uh, Bender's master problem by dynamically adding uh, Bender's cuts into this master problem. And both the master problem and the sub problem in the Bender's decomposition are solved by densic wolf decomposition through a dynamical column generation. So uh, we have also proposed some strategies to enhance uh, the performance of the approach based on the following observations. The first observation is that the uh, efficiency of the branch price and balance card approach largely depends on how fast our master problem can be solved by uh, the uh, column and the balance card generation algorithm. And we also observe that the difficulty for solving the master problem lies in the large number of constraints for birth allocation and the vessel traffic management because they are time dependent. Actually, we have uh, uh, one constraint for one time step. And based on this observation, uh, we solve, we propose to solve the master problem through a dynamic uh, constraint generation procedure, where the constraints for birth allocation and the vessel traffic management are generated uh, in a cutting plane manner. So our second observation is that because parts of the set recovery model M2, uh, parts of the ob objective of the uh, set recovery model are projected out in the Bender's reformulation. The optimality gap of the uh, BM of the master problem may be large in the initial stages of the algorithm due to the low quality of the lower bound. Uh, therefore, uh, we uh, propose to lift the lower bound of the master problem by using initial cuts called the lower bound lifting cuts, LBL cuts. In particular, we use these cuts to uh, estimate a lower bound of the cost in in pilot dispatching, which is the uh, cost of the sub problem. 
and the lift the lower bound of the master problem by requiring the um, variable eta to be no smaller than the lower bound of the uh, sub, -pro sub problem that is for pilot dispatching. And the, uh, the third observation is that in each iteration of the column generation procedure for solving the master problem, we have uh, this number of uh, pricing problems, each corresponding to a vessel and a burst. So if we can prove that a vessel can never be handled in a burst, then we can skip the, the pricing problem for uh, this pair of uh, vessel and a burst. So our third acceleration is, is to accelerate the column generation procedure for the master problem by fixing some value chi at uh, at uh, zero if uh, it cannot take one in an optimal integer solution for the set recovery model. And we will not solve the pricing problem for the relevant uh, um, vessel K and burst B. Our first observation is that uh, the master problem at the master, the penalty master problem at each node in the branch and band tree is solved with the empty set of the banner's cats at the very beginning. So the question is that can we utilize some of the cats generated at the nodes explored before? And uh, can we also make use of the uh, columns generated in the algorithm? And the answer is yes. Uh, we are. Uh, we propose to warm start the uh, column and the Bender's cut generation algorithm for solving the master problem at a node by using a set of initial Bender's cuts in the first iteration of the algorithm and by using a set of initial columns in each sub subsequent in iteration of the algorithm. And our last observation is that uh, we believe that having a good uh, upper bound for the set recovery model will help from branches in the branch and band tree in early stages. So we develop a uh, efficient primal heuristic based on the current uh, uh, fractional solution returned by solving M2, a model M2. So in the last section, I will present some uh, key computational results. We have tested the impacts of uh, uh, the enhancements and in particular, the impacts of uh, dynamic constraint and generation shorted as DCG um, on the performance of our branch and price and appearance cut approach. And the uh, computation results I show you in this is this table. The first column gives the length of the planning horizon in days and uh, the number of verses and the number of uh, vessels for a group of uh, five instances. We compare the performance of the approach with different acceleration strategies in terms of the, the number of the feasible solutions, the number of uh, um, optimal solutions, the average optimality gap, and the average computational time. So as we can see that the computational time decreased greatly after using the enhancements and the use of dynamic constraint generation also uh, led to a great decrease of the computational time from uh, 800 seconds to merely 43 seconds. We have also uh, investigated the um, impacts of other enhancements uh, on the performance of our approach. We have uh, compared the performance of the, of the four branch price and bandwidth cut approach with, with, with uh, uh, the performance of four uh, the approach with one enhancement removed out. So uh, we can see that each enhancement is meaningful as it uh, significantly reduced the uh, computational time. So uh, in the Western service planning problem, we solve the birth allocation problem and uh, the pilot pilotage planning problem in an uh, integrated manner. We then evaluated the value of this uh, integration by comparing the results of our method and uh, a method that solves the uh, birth allocation problem and the pilot digital planning problem sequentially. Uh, and these uh, comparisons are conducted under different uh, shift settings for assigning the pilots. In particular, we have, we have uh, changed the intervals between the start times of two shifts for, for uh, assigning the pilots. 
here, um, V represents the interval between the start times of, of two shifts uh, in hours. And a smaller V means that the assignment of pilots is more flexible. We have uh, also changed the cost of uh, assigning pilots to work in a, in a shift. So uh, the column PS represents the, the, num the average number of uh, uh, pilots assigned to work in the shifts decided by the sequential uh, solution method. And uh, uh, the columns PI report the number of uh, pilots determined by our integrated solution method. So we can see that the number of pilots uh, is significantly smaller if the integrated deserving method is applied. So we have also compared the gap between uh, the total cost obtained by the two methods for, for the instances and the results are presented in column gap. It shows, our, uh, it shows that our approach is of greater value when the um, cost of assigning a pilot is higher and when the uh, interval between the start times of two consecutive shifts become larger. So uh, I summarized some insights from the computational insights, the computational experiments. First, our approach combines vendor decomposition and column generation uh, within a branch and bound framework. Such a framework can be applied in algorithms for solving other problems that involve synchronized scheduling. Uh, second, uh, the impact of uh, the dynamic uh, constraint generation illustrates the value of using cutting plane techniques in solving an ALP when there are a large number of constraints, but most of them remain inactive in an um, optimal solution. Uh, third, the successful application of the uh, lower bound lifting inequalities indicates that the convergence of a vendor's decomposition algorithm can be accelerated by incorporating post information from uh, the sub problem into the master problem. Uh, besides, uh, the variable fixing um, strategy demonstrates how to accelerate the column generation in a system with multiple pricing problems. And our warm start strategy presents a framework of utilizing vendor's cuts generated at other nodes of a branch bound tree when the vendor sub problem involves integra integrality uh, constraints. Also, uh, considering the possibility of warm starting a node can also lead to a more efficient branching scheme. Uh, finally, uh, the uh, primal heuristic used in our approach provides insights regarding how to leverage the partial solution determined during the solution process to quickly generate a high quality feasible solution for problems that are solved through vendors decomposition or column generation. So uh, let me uh, summarize this presentation. So in the study, we, uh, we have introduced a VSPP, Western Surface Planning Problem in, in C ports that address um, burst allocation problem and the, the pilot digital planning problem in combination. And to solve large scale instances, we uh, have proposed a branch price and a bonus cut approach. The approach is improved by some uh, computational enhancements, including dynamic constraint generation, uh, LBL inequalities, variable fixing, warm start for the master problem, and the primal heuristics. So uh, the computational results show that these enhancements can significantly improve the performance of the approach. We have also compared the performance of our approach with the sec sequential approach, um, deserving approach. And the results demonstrate that integrating BAP and the PVP in the virtual service planning brings significant benefits to port authorities. So uh, that is all for my presentation. Thank you, and uh, I welcome any questions.